Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? This morning, we're going to be reading, and this is a big verse, out of Ezra 8.22. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken into the, unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good to seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. Let's see. That's the verse. All right, that's the verse. We're going to read this in context. Um, I want to thank everybody for lifting my wife up in prayer. Please continue to do so. She, her blood pressure has been high. She's letting that bother her. Other stuff is going on. I think her anxiety is really high. I'm trying to talk her down and get her to let it go and relax. If you can't, if you can't positively affect the situation, don't stress over it. There's nothing you can do for it. But um, that's a hard transition to make to, to learn how to do that. So we're 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 working on it. We're we're trying to get her there. But yeah, please keep praying for her because I think she's headed for a crash. She's already talking about dipping out of school and i was like no you came too far you 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 finish next summer gotta keep going so yeah she's she's in a crossroads right now please keep praying for her um, five. we will start in verse 16 then i sent for eliezer Ariel, Shemaiah, uh, El, El Nathan, Jareeb, El Nathan, again, Nathan, <coughs> Zechariah, and Meshulam, leaders also for Joyarib and El Nathan, again, men of understanding. And I gave them a, commando, a command for Edo, the chief man at the place Casiphia. And I told them that they should say, or what they should say to Edo and his brethren, the Nethanim at the place of uh, Casaphia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our God. Then by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherebiah with his sons and brothers, 18 men. And Hashabiah, uh, and with him uh, Jeshiah of the sons of Merari, his brothers and their sons, twenty men, also of the Nethanim, whom David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, two hundred and twenty Nethanim, all of them were designated by name. Fasting and prayer for protection. Verse 21, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river, of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So <clears throat> basically what he's saying is, He's ashamed that he showed a lack of faith in God. I shouldn't have asked for this escort. I should have just went and trusted the Lord. He's ashamed that he didn't. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. Priests to guard offerings. Verse 24, And I was separated twelve of the leaders of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their brethren with them, and weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the articles, the offering of the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered. I weighed into their hands 650 talents of silver. That's a lot of silver. Silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 gold basins worth a thousand drachmas, and two vessels of fine polished bronze, uh, precious as gold, 
And I said to them, You are holy to the Lord. The articles are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering to the Lord God of your fathers. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and heads of the fathers, houses of Israel in Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. And then they ended up doing that. So he's he's upset because of what happened. He's trying to make it right. A convoy on many accounts would have been desirable for the pilgrim band, but a holy shame facedness would not allow Ezra to seek one. He feared lest the heathen king should think his professions of faith in God to be mere hypocrisy. Oh, you say you believe in your God? Now look at you. Or imagine that the God of Israel was not able to preserve his own worshipers. Now, that's something we kind of deal with today. I've heard it before. Oh, where's your God now? He's right there. See, you don't know what his will is. You don't know what he's doing in this situation. I say, as terrible as this situation looks, he's going to bring something amazing out of it. And every time he did. And I brought that up to them. And they never would acknowledge it. He could not bring his mind to lean on an arm of flesh in a matter so evidently of the Lord. And therefore the caravan set out with no visible protection. Guarded by him who is the sword and shield of his people. It is to be feared the few believers feel this holy jealousy for God, even those who in a measure walk by faith, occasionally mar the luster of their life by craving aid from man. I'll tell you a story. We bought this place in uh, 2000 and it had the old trailer on there and, and we could lock the doors. Um, but it was just, just an old beat up. I mean, I think the, the I think it was bought new in 1971 or 72, something like that. Put on this place in 74, uh, so it's very old. So um, when my stepfather bought us this new one, um, the door locks didn't work. I never could get them to work right. So for almost 15 years, we never locked our doors. We would go trips. I went to the army. Or we went to New York. I was stationed up there. I mean, we, we didn't lock our doors for a long time, almost 15 years. And I was like, Lord, I can't lock him. I trust you to watch over our place. And he did. Never had a problem. Nobody ever came up here. Even to this day, it still happens. The Lord will watch over you. The Lord will care for you. I can go story by story by story on all kinds of things that he's done in our lives specifically. The Lord watches over us. Now, obviously, we take certain precautions, and I lock my doors now because I fixed the locks. I finally figured out how to get them to work. But you can trust the Lord to watch over you, your things, your livelihood. We've just got to be willing to walk in faith. It is a most blessed thing to have no props and no buttresses, but to stand upright on the rock of ages, upheld by the Lord alone. A lot of people ask me if I'm worried about my health. I'm like, no. The Lord will keep me going. He will give me the strength I need, the abilities that I need, and the resources that I need to be able to do what I need to do. He will give me that ability. I'm not worried about my health. Why would I worry about something I can barely do anything about anyway? And so I, I trust the Lord. I have to. I have no other recourse. Would any believers seek state endowments for their church? Uh-oh, 501c3. If they remembered that the Lord is dishonored by their asking Caesar's aid? As if the Lord could not supply the needs of his own cause. See, a lot of churches do that. This whole, this whole tax break thing, to me, when I look at it, it's a tax shelter. And I don't think it's right. I don't think it's something that, that the church should ask for. Pay your taxes. You don't need a 501c3. Pay your taxes. But see, for a lot of organizations, the, the, the churches they start are a way to funnel money. And I've seen it happen. I've seen the documentation on it. And I know how several of them work. If you guys remember the... Um, um, what's it called? Can't remember what it's called. It's got the dove as their emblem. 
um, Chuck Missler was part of, and they broke into two pieces, and Chuck Missler went one way, and uh, the other Chuck went the other way. Um, I can't remember what they're called now. Anyway, um, that that part, the part that the other guy went with, not Chuck Missler, they, they went a completely different direction uh, and did a Konania house. Um, this other guy, they they send, they train up people, they send them out into areas, rural areas, and have them start cowboy churches. And then when they get to a certain point, they're able to roll back, and, and they were already sent out there by them, but they, they do a, a what's the association. And they sign documentation to become association. So the main church will help them to get their church established. But then they're in a contract to pay back to the main church. Most of their revenue comes from satellite churches. So it's it's a hustle. It's a money-making scheme. And my last church got, was that was the very same thing. My last church was 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 that. It's exactly what it was. And I did a little research and found that out. Most of the most of the people left the church um, because of certain issues that were coming up. But there was a lot of stuff going on that was not good. And when I found all that stuff out, I'm like, wow. You would think that somebody could start a church and stand on their own. And they can't. And they ask for Caesar's aid for all these things. Instead of just trusting the Lord to keep their church going, because he will. He has. He still does. Should we run so hastily to friends and relations for assistance if we remember that the Lord is magnified by our implicit reliance upon his solitary arm? Do we go to the Lord for our problems? I do. More and more I do. I told you guys the story about the little tractor and the, and being able to do what I need to do and, and the strength to get up and do it, like getting up in that lift. I'm scared of heights. I get real wobbly-legged when I get way up in the air, and I was 30 foot plus up in the air. But the work needed to be done, and the Lord took my fear away so I could do it. Um, this truck out here, I mean, this thing still is, is still showing how much of a blessing that it is. It's amazing. That lift, we were not only were able to do our trees, but we were able to do trees for two other people. Amazing. It's all the Lord. And the Lord is glorified in this. He's magnified in our reliance on him. That's why we should. And that's why I tell you guys. I don't tell you this because I don't know what it, what it looks like or what it is. Or just because it's a passing understanding. I live it. I do it. And that's why I tell you guys to do it. Go to him. Ask him. You'll see. My soul, wait thou only upon God. But, says one, are not means to be used? Surely they are. But our fault seldom lies in their neglect. Far more frequently it springs out of foolishly believing in them instead of believing in God. Use your means. Use what you have. Use it for what you need. But don't put your faith in, in that thing. Don't put your reliance on those means. Instead, put them in the God that provides the means. Few run too far in neglecting the creature's arm. But very many sin greatly in making too much of it. Learn, dear reader, to glorify the Lord by leaving means untried, if by using them thou wouldst dishonor the name of the Lord. So you use what's available to you. But if in the act of using them, it causes you to dishonor God, don't use them. Stay away from them. Now, it can be, we can get into a lot of gray area when it comes to that stuff. The whole thing comes down to trust. What does the Lord tell us to do in the Bible? And do we trust him for those things? And a lot of people struggle with this. It's normal. It's normal to struggle with these things. But now is a great opportunity for us to come to a greater understanding. Because you have someone here in, in, in speaking in the video that has lived it. And has lived it recently. Very recently. If it wasn't for the, the hospice here here in Guadalupe County, um, we wouldn't have been able to do what we were able to do for my mother-in-law and my father. And it was amazing that the Lord brought the same exact people because we're all familiar with each other. The same exact people. And, and it's just astounding. 
It just blows me away the way he arranged this. And I look back on my life now and I see all the, the instances that happened that were bringing me and my wife to the point to be able to do this for them. See, the Lord already knew when he was going to take them home, but he prepared us to be able to be the ones to take care of them. He answered our, all our prayers concerning it. Take them quietly and peacefully. Lord, if, if, you're, if you're taking them home, take them quickly, quietly and peacefully. And he did, both of them. You can't imagine how peaceful it was. You can't imagine how quiet and how gentle. And it's just amazing. So as, as the person speaking in the video, I can assure you, if you go to the Lord for those things and you trust him for that, and, and you got to knuckle down on this, and you, you got to sit down and you got to make the decision. You know what? I'm going to trust him for these things. Make the decision, make the, the, the change your mind about it. it it's, it's, it's literally what repentance is. Change your mind. And then go to him in prayer and say, okay, Lord, so I'm, I've doubted you on this, but I don't want to doubt you anymore. I want to have faith in you for this too. I want to lay this at your feet and wait to see what you want me to do. Lord, show me what to do. And if, if it's nothing, then make me to stand and wait on your word, to wait on you to act and then move forward. And watch what happens for yourself and you'll see. I know there's, a, there's people listening that are struggling with stuff that they have not taken to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Take all of it to the Lord. Lord, what should I do about this? Lord, what should I do about that? How should I respond to this or that? And he will show you. I know he will because he does for me. And I'm not, I am certainly not special. I am certainly not some special individual that he responds to, but he doesn't respond to other people. He will respond to all of us. We're, we belong to him. We're his children. So take it to the Lord. Look to him, trust in him, rely on him. I've got so many things that I used to worry about, but I've let them go because it's like, I have no control over this. I have to trust the Lord for this. And however it goes is how it goes. I have to trust the Lord for it. And if you can bring yourself to that place where you lay it all on the, on the table in front of him, you lay it all at the foot of the cross. You can bring yourself to a place where you're like, oh, well, that's interesting. Lord, what should I do about this? Instant prayer. Lord, well, how do I handle this? What should I do about this? How should this go? You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. What you'll find is a new found, once you make that step, that first step of faith, that leap of faith, you'll find a new found trust in him and a hope in him, but you'll start to see where it connects to him in everything you do. You'll start to be constantly thinking about him and be reminded of him. And when a problem rises, when something goes on, your first response is prayer. Then your second response is going to the means and using what you have at your disposal. By all means, we use them. We go to God first to show us what to do. By all means, we take what we have available to us and at our disposal and use them. But first, we go to the Lord and ask him how. Lord, how should I use these so that you are glorified, but so that the blessing is shed upon everybody? I can only tell you my personal experience. The, the, the seeing it happen real time in my life. I can only tell you from my own view. You have to go and you have to take those things to him at first. And I, and I can assure you, I understand how hard it is sometimes to do that. You feel unworthy or you feel like he's not going to, he's not going to be focused on something like this, or you feel like some other reason or whatever other reasons of, of, of why you shouldn't take a certain issue or something to the Lord. I tell you, take everything, no matter what it is, even if it's sin, take it to him. Lord, what do I do with this? And he'll take his arm and put it on one corner of the table and sweep it across and sweep everything off the table and say, it's all taken care of. Nothing on the table in front of you. Don't worry about it. I got it. Live a life that glorifies the Lord. Live in a way that shows that you have faith in him and look to him for everything that you do. 
go to him in prayer and ask him about these things. You'll, you'll genuinely be shocked at sometimes at the response you get because it'll be so blatant and so obvious and so clear. There's times I've been in prayer with what should I do? And instantly the thought hits me and I'm like, okay, well, thank you, Lord. I, I wasn't sure you just showed me because I didn't know what to do. And he showed me, oh, well, that's true. I can do that. It happens. I can assure you that it happens and I can assure you he will respond to you. Now, keep in mind, you may not get the answer you want. A lot of people have this problem. Well, he didn't give me what I wanted. That's because that's not what you needed. He may not give you what you want, but he will certainly give you exactly what you need. And it will be perfectly fine. It will work perfectly because he never does anything halfway. He always does it perfectly. Don't believe me. Try it for yourself. And you will see with your own eyes how the Lord works in every situation. And I, I guarantee it, it fosters peace that defies all understanding and joy inexpressible. It brings about a sense of, of calm and, and peace and quietness of spirit. Because you see what goes on around the world and you don't worry about it anymore. I have some unique life experiences that help me with some of this. I've had certain experiences that have kind of hardened me to certain stresses. But don't get it twisted. I still have stress in my life. And as soon as it comes, Lord, what should I do? Sometimes I'll wait a little bit to see what's the right thing to ask for in this case. It may not be, Lord, can you take the stress away? It may be, you know, Lord, that issue right there with that person, Lord, can you help with that? Would you help help with that? And the answer is yes, he will help. Because by helping that situation with that person, we'll take away the stress. We'll solve the whole problem. He never does anything part way. He always does it fully. Again, don't believe me. Try for yourself and you will see and you will have no more doubt that the Lord is there and he will help you. It, and it, it fosters more and more of that understanding that he's a living, breathing person sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. He's If he was to appear before you, you could grab him by the arm. That's how real he is. He's real, a real person. What we've got to learn to do is to trust him. He said, I'll do all these things. I'll come to bat for you. I'll protect you. I'll provide for you. I'll do all these things for you. You just bring them to me. Show me you believe. And I'll show you things you never thought you'd ever see. And he does that because he does it for me all the time. And it still blows me away. It still amazes me. Times where I quote scripture and then start reading in the devotion and the very same scripture is quoted. I don't read these ahead. I assure all of you, I do not read ahead. I want them to be as organic as possible. When I'm you're hearing it, I'm the it's the first time I'm reading it. And I love it. I love it. Sometimes you guys quote scripture that so perfectly matched what was said. I never even thought about it. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Our God is amazing. Why do we doubt him so much? Let's not do that anymore, but instead, let's have faith. Let's believe for the glory and honor of his name and for our blessing. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word, and thank you for this devotion. It is astounding to grasp just how much you are really there and you help. And, and the world has taught us that you're a distant God. Society has taught us, oh, don't bother him with those little issues. He's not interested in that. Lord, you're interested in the most minute detail. And I know this by descriptions you've given in the Bible when you were talking about Aaron and how the oil ran down his beard, dripped onto his robe and went down to the bottom. You gave such specific detail that that tells me that that's what you're focused on is the little details, the little things. When a, when a, a, a dew drop evaporates on a blade of grass, you know it, you see it. When a baby bird falls out of a nest, you see it, you know. 
You're aware of every single thing, every single tiny detail that is in your creation. Why would you not be be focused on or interested in the little problems we have? I mean, you show throughout the Bible over and over again how you are so focused on these little details involving everything and everyone. And it's amazing to me. So that tells me that even the little problems you're interested in, you're, you're focused on. And so why would we not bring everything to you? Lord, the problem is, again, the problem is us. We don't have that level of faith. Today, that needs to change. So I ask, Lord, that you bestow that level of faith on each one of us listening, on all the brethren around the world, that we suddenly have this moment where we pause and we stop and we think, you know, I, I need to make that leap of faith and trust the Lord for everything. Not just seize these things <clears throat> and then I trust the world for all this. But I need to trust him for every single thing and watch how everything changes. And we will see change. We will see change within ourselves. We'll see change within those around us. Because whenever we walk in that level of faith, others around us will also walk in that level of faith because it will rub off on them. It will overflow to them. Lord, the blessing you pour out on us doesn't just affect me when you pour it out on me. It affects everybody in my household. It affects my neighbors. incredible. You are an incredible God. You are an amazing Lord. How could we not come to you? And again, we get that poem off that church, that German church on that door, that po a poem that was engraved in there in German that I've quoted many times here. And uh, it, it hits home. You call me rich and ask me not. You call me helper and come to me with, with and don't come to me. Lord, why won't why wouldn't we come to you? May we all come to you. May we bring our issues to you. May we come to you, talk to you, confide in you, pour our like the psalm says, pour our hearts out before you. And trust you to deal with it, to answer, to respond, to change, to move. Lord, may every born again believer today do that. Make that decision today. May all the members of the church turn around the other way and go, you know what? Why am I worried about this? I'm going to ask the Lord. I'm going to ask the Lord and see what he says. That's my call today for, for, for to everybody, to all the believers, to anyone who listens to this, but to everybody else out there that doesn't listen to it. Lord, that's my call is that they come to a place where they turn and they face you and say, I trust you and lay it all out right there. And I'm going to wait on you, Lord, for you to show me what to do next. Just like Moses did when you said, I'm done. I'm finished with him. You know what? Y'all just figure it out. And Moses said, uh, I'm not moving. You, you let us out here. Only you know the right way to go. Only you know the right thing to do. I don't know what to do. I'm not moving an inch if we're staying right here until you tell us where to go. That's how we should be. Lord, I don't know where to go or what to do. So I'm going to wait until you show me. And you went to Moses and you showed him. All right, Moses, let's go. Gather them up. May we have even a quarter of that faith. May we have even a fraction of that faith. In this day and age, in these end times, in the way the world is today, and all this prophecy being fulfilled, a breakneck speed involving the end times, Lord, may we have that level of faith today towards you for your glory and in your holy name. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. Thank you for your peace, your love. Thank you for your help. Thank you that we have someone we can go to for anything and everything. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. Trust the Lord in all things, for all things, through all things. This is a call to every believer that, that hears this and, and the call to the ones that don't. So the Holy Spirit will have to work on that one because I can't reach everybody around the world. Trust the Lord, take it to him and wait on him. See for yourself that he is good and that he will help. I know because he does. We have story after story after story in the Bible of him doing that. Trust the Lord.
Again, you may not get exactly what you want, but you will get exactly what you need. And it will be a blessing. And then we'd be thankful. We never forget to give thanks. Because he's always caring for us and watching over us. He knows how rough it is here. He knows what we're going through. He will care for us through it. I can assure you of that. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.